Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name's David T. Kramer. This is Sociology, and today we're talking about suicide and Durkheim's theory. Who was David Emil Durkheim? Why was he interested in suicide? Can social reality impact suicide? This is a bar graph showing the 20 biggest killers of Americans. And notice here that the two biggest of the biggest killers are heart disease and cancer. Well, where does suicide fit into this picture? Suicide is the 10th leading cause of death. Over 30,000 people kill themselves each year in the United States. That makes suicide about two, a little over two times more likely to occur than homicide. This is a line graph comparing black folks with white folks, comparing males with females, and looking at various age groups. Notice that the age groups are charted here on the horizontal axis or the x-axis. And on the vertical axis, the y-axis, we have the rate per 100,000 of each group. One thing that sticks out right away is the fact that white males have a higher rate of suicide than any other ethnic group. And notice here that white males, when they reach Social Security age, Medicare age, their suicide rate jumps way up. So we know that old white males have the highest suicide rate of any demographic category. Black males, on the other hand, their suicide rate peaks during early adulthood. Also notice that females, regardless of their ethnicity, have a lower suicide rate than do males. And the absolute lowest demographic category for suicide is black females. You may be surprised to see that teens actually have a lower suicide rate than do adults of any age. One thing I want to point out here is that this line graph deals with the year 2000, but we could look at 1995, 2005, 2013, it doesn't matter these differences are consistent from year to year. With suicide, we know that the cause of the death is the individual. So we can say suicide is a human action because it is intentional, which means that human beings choose means to achieve end goals. And in this case, the person is choosing suicide as a means to an end, to their end. But is that the only phenomenon? Is life the only phenomenon that the individual is trying to end? Oftentimes, people want to end physical pain, psychological pain, or both. Because every single individual is unique, there, there may be as many motives for suicide as there are individuals who commit suicide. And Durkheim's theory does not help us explain individual motivation. Durkheim's theory does not help us explain any of the biological variables that we know are related to suicide. The quantity and the quality of serotonin receptors in the brain, or the, or the, fact, the biological fact of being male, that is having the XY chromosome, makes one three to four times more likely to commit suicide than being biologically a female with the XX chromosome. Durkheim's theory does not help us understand why so many prescription drugs, things like acne medication, weight loss medication, painkillers, psychotherapeutic drugs, even drugs to treat cholesterol. There are many, many prescription drugs that alter an individual's biology in such a way as they are more likely to commit suicide. And Durkheim's theory does not help us understand why or how alcohol alters our biology. Alcohol use and alcohol abuse is definitely linked to suicide. Durkheim's theory does not help us understand the psychological variables related to suicide, like depression or bipolar disorder or anxiety or schizophrenia. However, Durkheim's theory does give us some very, very powerful ideas about how we can structure our social reality so that that social reality 
acts like a buffer or a prophylactic. And that buffer just might buy individuals, some individuals anyway, enough time that they can work on and solve their individual problems. David Emil Durkheim was born in 1858 and he died in 1917. He dropped his Jewish name David and went by the name Emil Durkheim. He established sociology as an academic discipline in France and oftentimes we call Durkheim one of the fathers of founding fathers of sociology. He published published his study titled Suicide in 1897. Why was he interested in suicide? He had a friend who committed suicide, but he believed that if he could show that social facts impact suicide, that this would go a long ways toward establishing sociology as a discipline. David Emil Durkheim examined the archival data on suicide in European nations in the latter 1800s. He found that the same social positions, the same statuses, had higher rates of suicide no matter which country he was looking at. He also found that suicide rates stay about the same from year to year to year as long as the basic social conditions remain the same. So those two things indicated to Durkheim that there's something sociological going on here. And then he found that suicide rates are connected to two social facts. One, social regulation, and two, social integration. Durkheim found that single people have higher rates of suicide, divorced people have higher rates of suicide, married couples without children have higher rates of suicide, Protestants have higher rates of suicides than Catholics or Jews. Immigrants, especially immigrants immigrating from rural areas to urban areas have higher rates of suicide, and unemployed people have higher rates of suicide. Durkheim also found that the suicide rate goes up during rapid economic decline, or what used to be called panics, what today we call recessions or depressions. Paradoxically, the suicide rate goes up during economic prosperity. So when the economy booms, suicide rates go up. When the economy busts, suicide rates go up. Durkheim found the suicide rate, the suicide rate, goes down when a nation state initially goes to war, although military personnel have a higher rate of suicide than the general population. Durkheim found that association with other people has a regulating impact upon one's life. Why? Because association with other people leads to expectations for the individual's actions, or what we call social norms. If you violate a social norm, other people will punish you, provide some kind of negative feedback or negative sanction. So association with others has a regulating impact upon the individual. Durkheim found that social regulation occurs on a continuum from low to high. And if we can get that regulation, or if that regulation is, in balance, if you can have an equilibrium of social regulation, then that will work as a prophylactic or a buffer so that people who are suicidal are less likely to commit suicide when social regulation is balanced, when there's an equilibrium. When social regulation is too low, then a con condition of anime exists, and Durkheim called those suicides that occur when social regulation is too low, anomic suicides. When social regulation is too high, then fatalism may exist, and Durkheim called those suicides that exist when social regulation is too high, he called those suicides fatalistic. The idea here is to have an equilibrium or a balance in social regulation, and that works as a buffer. To suicide.
Durkheim found that association with others may help provide meaning and purpose to one's life. Social integration occurs when one identifies with the goals of the groups to which one belongs. Here again, social integration can be low, it can be high. And once again, Durkheim found that if we can get an equilibrium in terms of social integration, that will work like a buffer. Individuals who are suicidal are less likely to commit suicide if there's an equilibrium. Durkheim called suicides that occur when social integration is too low, egoistic, and he called those when integration is too high, altruistic. Social roles are the connecting points between the individual and others. It is in one's roles that we experience either too much or too little regulation or too much or too little integration. So really, to achieve a balance in regulation and integration, we want to balance our roles. And what that means is that the group is not more important than the individual and the individual is not more important than the group. So how do we achieve an equilibrium in our role, in our roles? How do we meet the needs of others while at the same time meeting our own needs so that the needs of the individual do not become more important than the needs of others and the needs of others do not become more important than the needs of the individual. The best way to organize social interaction and association in order to achieve this balance is participatory democracy, which means that every person in the group has an equal voice in deciding what the group will do and how the group will do what they're going to do. Also, what goes along with that in a free society or a free market society is the freedom to disassociate if the group decides to do something that the individual cannot go along with. So that the person can disassociate from the group by some means other than suicide. Okay, so what are we left with? Suicide is an individual act. The cause of a person's death who commits suicide is the person who does that act. And the person chooses suicide as a means to an end. And we may never know exactly what the motives were. But even though suicide is an individual act, if we can achieve an equilibrium of social regulation and social integration, then that can function as a buffer. And that may help people buy time, enough time to solve their personal problems. Okay, my name's David T. Kramer. This is Sociology. And today we talked about suicide and Durkheim's theory. Thank you very much for your participation.